guys, and we are at day three of Alcatraz Festival. A whole summer without festivals? Drinking beers with, with, with buddies and uh, how... Is Can't that, imagine that. Is that it's, real? It's, it's, is that for real? Yes, that's right. Alcatraz Prison went into lockdown and so did an incredible lineup. And for us that means no moshing, no concerts, no screaming along to our favorite artists. For that reason we decided to put together a compilation so that we could bring some of that festival vibe to you in your living room or wherever you are. So free up some space, let your hair down and enjoy the show. Damn, it's a very fun festival to go to as a visitor. Uh, I never missed uh, missed an Alcatraz edition. I mean, Alcatraz. Who wants? Who doesn't want to get in a prison? In a prison. The audience was killer, like always. It's a fucking great festival. It's Disneyland in hell. Well, it's my first time on a cell. Yeah. Yes, I. Um, all these years touring and rock and rolling, I always kept out of trouble. Yeah. You seem I, like a nice guy. We have Death Angel in our little uh, makeshift prison cell right now. Have you guys ever been to busted. prison? I've never been to prison, but I've been arrested once. What an opening question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, oh. co no comment. <laughs> That spark ever start in the beginning? At the beginning, we were just always playing, playing with each other at like family functions, and then basically we discovered Kiss. To be honest, like I mean, we started discovering music, but once we like got totally obsessed with Kiss, and then we tried to like be Kiss. So we like put on Kiss makeup and like air guitar and like put on like concerts at the fa at the family we parties. Sure did. <laughs> Adorable. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been. Yeah, yeah, if you were our mom. Points. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Do you know that you're a legend? Do you feel like a legend? <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, you know, I put in my time for, you know, 31 years. We're coming up here on the first release of our first record. So I'm very fortunate and blessed to still be, get the opportunity to play still and yeah. do what I do. I'm going to see this once for all old school metal motherfuckers out there. You know who you are. Song's called Over the Wall. over the wall and I was gonna Alex backstage goes why don't you tell him we shot our first video on Alcatraz in San Francisco oh Smell really it. yeah and, tell and me and we did it in a, in a prison cell the whole deal so this is just like back back at the beginning for over the wall cool. we, we snuck our own cameras we didn't get permission so we brought handheld cameras and our jackets and every time we'd sneak off from the tour we'd be <laughs> running and filming ourselves and everything so we bootlegged it on Alcatraz and it was oh really good. yeah and the tour guy didn't notice didn't notice no. Oh, there's just a guy headbanging over there. It's all good. <laughs> well, we would held back and they, they would go on and we'd say, hey, quick, go, ready, dear. We'd figure out what we're going to do and do it real quick. We had like 20 seconds and before they came looking for us. Alcatraz! Let's get those horns in the air! 
Since I beat cancer, my whole outlook on just touring and traveling is I, I told myself, God, I've been fortunate to see the world, but I don't really see it. I stayed at the gig or I was on a bus or I woke up hungover and, you know. Right. Where now, I'm like a tourist. I get to go out and go sightsee and I got to go back to the gig and sing for an hour. It's like, you know, right. it's, it's totally flipped where yeah. Yeah. I spend my time enjoying everything. Yeah. And then on top of it, I get to play for an hour and have fun. Do you do you take care of yourself in a different way now, or do yeah, you... on, on tour, well, I don't drink anymore. And on tour, once I start touring, I don't, I quit smoking weed, and you know. So I'm really conscious about when I'm on the road, mm -hmm. because once I lose my voice or it gets a little damaged, then it's I can't get I can't get it back until I take a big break. Right. So I can't afford to do that. So I really out of the gate have to plan that and I, I'll take like a month or two before and start really like training and jogging and rock and roll is hard work yeah it's did you know that month. going into it no I thought it was all fun and games and <laughs> sex drugs and rock and roll man I, I, what happened I mean I think it started out like that when we were young I mean yeah that's I think that's people always tell me man you guys are getting better in your age you're like I think because when I was younger it was sex drugs rock and roll I didn't think about the show and I was partying and smoking and just we we're all going crazy, and I think now where we're at, we're all focused on our show and performance for fans. So it's a full circle of what we started and thought it was to where we are now. of my life already like what's the worst that can happen the crowd hates you but I know they I knew they wouldn't it was incredible I mean a sea of people when there was like two fucking three or four different mosh pits in different areas it was just every time we go to Belgium it doesn't matter Belgian people aren't like that they don't give a fuck I do When I'm on stage, I'm fleshless. I'm almost tapping into the shaman within. I collect the energies either in the room or in the festival, and I magically put it into one little potion. And then all the 100,000 kids that are out there, there's a circle of energy inside of my hand, imaginatively, and then I just go, <laughs> And whatever the people are given to me is given right back to them. How did that make you feel though, that moment when you just sort of realized that all these great tours and all this like opportunity to connect with fans and your audience has just gone out the window? I always look at things as being as a blessing in disguise. 
of course I crave human touch and I want to devour a million human beings right now. But uh, listen, I'm alive another day. This is the way it's got to go down. I have to pay homage to that and, you know, respect what Earth is trying to tell us. Come on. I don't have a plan, but I do have a vision. We were here last time, two or three years ago. Yeah. I remember Exit was playing um, that stage, and then it was Venom. Yeah. And I was dragged on stage by Kronos, and yeah. I was tipsy already, and I was at the side of the stage just being a fan. And they started playing In League with Satan, and I was just, Whoa! and Kronos was like, come on stage. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> boom, and I ran into it. In League with Satan, So it was a cool moment. I, I never forget it. So good memories. Absolutely. Another great moment was in 2016 when Twisted Sister played their last European show ever after more than 30 years in the game. Thank you, Alcatraz. Thank you, Alcatraz. Tomorrow, we have um, Twisted Sister here. Oh, they're team. here tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. That's right, because we've seen them yeah, a few yeah, times yeah. this summer. <laughs> I, I believe that it's the last tour and the last show. Um, I, but who knows? Uh, what, you know, look, if two years from now they have some big offers to come play a festival somewhere and they're all not doing anything, <laughs> odds are maybe they'll play again. But uh, it would be nice to see a band say that and then actually not come back. The only band that's ever done that is the Beatles. Yeah. Really? Well, well think about it. Think about it. Every other band has come out of retirement. Or, when but I can it? imagine yeah. after so much time, it's just not that easy to kind of stay home and, you know, for a while I can imagine that it's really great and you're just like kind of catching up on everything, but there comes a point where you, you know, you kind of start rock. wandering. Yeah, if maybe it's yeah. a good idea. They want. Yeah, you know, money talks. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's really, Especially on the level where they're a stadium act. And, and actually the only other one, and they only did it for the one show, was Led Zeppelin. They did the one show at the O2. And right. they've had offers. I mean, I, I've heard of offers out there, you know, insane amounts of money, as you could imagine. And, uh, and they haven't done it because... Because they don't I, get I don't, along anymore. Well, I, don't know. I also don't know personally, but I, somehow I don't think yeah. Jimmy and Robert are too worried about their finances. No, but, uh, um, you know, still though, Even Guns N' Roses came back together. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, if you could go out and sell stadiums out around the world and it'll take a year out of your life, well, why not go do it? You know, like, how is that not going to be fun? You wouldn't be so hard to convince. That's already. Well, we're still together. Yeah, we, yeah. Need, we would need to, we no, would need to go on hiatus. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
we're all fans of lots of bands. If Zeppelin announced tomorrow that they were coming around and touring, we would all want to be, we yeah, would all go sure, to that. Sure. In a second, we would all go to that show. So as a fan, there's, I would love to see David Gilmour and Roger Waters get back together and do it one more time, you know? Like, there's so many bands that I would love to see. I never thought Faith No More was gonna come back. Faith No More came back. I know the Genesis well, reunion. Yeah, well. Steve so, Perry back in Journey. Yeah. Why yeah. not? One more time. Yeah, right. The Smiths. Do it. There's, there's other reasons why they don't do it. Man. I don't know. <laughs> AC Peter back in Kiss. Yeah. There, I said it. You can do better than that. That's not everybody. You're not screaming it. Who are you? Who are you? Now, I just want to say, I, I didn't know if I was going to get emotional or not get emotional about this, but I got to say that, uh, you know, people don't get a chance to live their dreams, and you gave us a chance to live ours. And I thank you. You got to get it all in one package. And we needed someone that did it all and looked like Lady Gaga at the same fucking time. And we found him, and it really couldn't have been without him. So let's just say it's, ladies and gentlemen, the best front man in rock and roll, D. fucking Snyder! Actually, I saw you two years ago with Twisted Sister, and yeah. you guys were here on the stage, and it was gonna be the end of Twisted Sister and the end of you coming here. I really thought I was done. I really thought I was done, because I really felt like Twisted was my great love, and we were parting company, and we still loved each other, but and I didn't have any plans on meeting somebody else. And then all of a sudden, you know, I fell in love again, and, uh, and I'm back, and I, I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like, but like, did they think I was lying to them, that I fooled them? I was this, you know, for the love of metal, my new album was a complete surprise. D, we got a Kurt, what? You know, this is the first four we're not gonna take at night in our fucking history? That's the first the time. The first time we've done any four audience fucking anywhere. Saying it four times. We're going for five. What's that? Well, I, I think we're approaching five. Come on! Scream it! Five fucking times! Back to two years ago when I was actually in the front stage, you know, rocking away to Twisted Sister's show. I was so impressed with your showmanship, how you move on the stage and you sort of know exactly where to be. That's something, even though I know you obviously have tons of experience, it means that it's naturally in you. It's learned, it's, it's instinctive, it's all those things. Uh, I just wish I could plug a flash drive or something in the back of my neck and then give it to some young musician and say, here, take this, run with it. I am a force of nature, destroy your brain design. I consider myself to be an entertainer. And at the end of the day, beyond the messages, beyond firing people up, I, I, I want to entertain people and it's an escape for people. You come to a show, you're supposed to forget about your problems, you're supposed to just get lost for a little while in the music and in the moment, and scream a little bit and yell a little bit and feel better afterwards.
You got the gold medal, Belgium. You got the gold medal. I quite like Belgium. Uh, really good food. Really good beer. Good festivals. Yeah, actually. good shows. Nine percent beer. What is wrong with you people? Are you crazy? I think of coarse Belgium fries and waffles and dripping chocolate, which I really don't normally have, but I might have them in Belgium. I think of a a collective of people that know how to fucking get down and party and at the same time love and respect one another and use the power of kindness. In our Belgian studio over there, we have two Belgian metal frontmen, Frankie de Smet van Damme from Channel Zero, and we have Jeroen Kamerlink from Fleddy Melkuli. You also have a podcast together, Flanky and Fleddy. How did your bromance connection, friendship, how did that start? From early on in 2016, when we began with, uh, with Fleddy Melkuli, uh, I think after four or five months, we, we already played a show together. I think it was in, uh, in, in Kortrijk. Yes. Uh, for yes. Alcatraz, uh, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it the, was a, an immediate connection. <laughs> it was the, like I found my father. <laughs> <laughs> and I found my son. <laughs> Channel Zero was actually on the lineup for this year, but we didn't know that. It was cancelled before you actually got to, you know, yeah. share that with the world. So that's... Um, that was a bummer, I guess. Well, yeah, COVID uh, took us by surprise. So I think half of Alcatraz didn't realize that we were going to play uh, this year. It was actually a surprise pull up. So now you know. The same for us. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. Stop making stupid people Stop making stupid Lady Melkevi as well was very busy this last year. You guys put an album out in March of 2020. <laughs> if, I had, if I knew what was going to happen, I would definitely uh, uh, postpone the whole, the whole thing. Our, our record literally came out the day the lockdown started. And after a week, we got also the news that uh, the factory in, in France uh, that distributes all the records was also in quarantine and couldn't uh, work anymore. So it was like the worst case that you could, uh, could have. How do you guys both respectively sort of deal with that disappointment and with this change of plans that you have no control over? Me for myself, I, I immediately got in, in some kind of... Um, I wanted to, to create stuff, to, to keep myself busy, but also to uh, entertain our, our fans. Because, yeah, we were going to start a, a club tour 25 dates, we couldn't go play, but we, I had the urge to entertain uh, our fans, so I started uh, making small movies. We asked to our fans to film themselves, uh, to make a quarantine video, stuff like that. Now, we're like three or four months now after the start of that lockdown. I don't know what to do anymore. It's like I need some, some perspective uh, and that's something that we don't get uh, right now. And that's really frustrating and um, I don't think that I'm the only one. For me, the COVID thing is there and it's horrible and we don't want it. But honestly, didn't we see stuff coming? Uh, I mean, the whole environmental thing is... Hitting us in the face. We keep popping up the heat on the planet. We're so smart, yeah, we keep going on like nothing's wrong. Like ants, we crumble over each other. To get out of marching to the end of the world. Oh man, we're, we're fucking so much shit up. And we keep going and it's like... You know, if, if you see a pole and you drive with your car and, and you, if you don't turn the wheel, uh, you hit the fucking pole or the wall, you know. I mean, black fuel is actually <laughs> 25 years ago, it's the same statement. It didn't change for me. Black fuel But you would 
write a song like Black Fuel uh, today. Yeah, I would probably get fucked over because it's Black Fuel. <laughs> Why isn't it White Fuel? <laughs> All Fuel! <laughs> I'm here now with um, Gabriel. 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 <laughs> yeah. From the Belgian band My Diligence. Brussels based band? Brussels based band, yes. We're doing like a heavy psychedelic stoner. What do you think about the whole uh, fucking shitty situation where... I where think we... I think it's for the better, it's for the, the best of everyone. And uh, so we had to do this, we had to stop. We just faced the situation, but we were locked down from one day to another. Just like this. Mm -hmm. And so it was a bit, uh, it was a bit uh, strange in our heads, I think. We were supposed to, to release the EP in March. And uh, we were COVIDed, so uh, we, we didn't release it. And uh, we used that uh, the space time in the space world, like uh, yeah. just stopped to compose and uh, to put it on our EP that will be released normally in October. It's always interesting to ask someone from the Belgian metal scene, how do you look at it? Um, um, it's kind of strange because you know uh, we're, we're living in a strange country and we can say that Flemish this country is country. separated in two but uh, the thing is I hope that uh, this crisis will get uh, bands being closer than ever yeah my feeling is that something is growing in, in Belgium Lockdown uh, boredomness. I uh, was just jamming to some ghost songs and then this decided to, yeah, I'll maybe like record a guitar cover of Dance Macabre, the song. And then it started escalating, like the rest of the band got involved. Then I was like, hey, it would be cool to have some guest vocals. And then after a few weeks, I had like 20 people on one song. <laughs> Everyone involved, everyone in the song is, they're all good friends of ours. So then I just sent it to him, hey, we recorded this, you want to do something? Do whatever you want, like how you want to do it, or also with the video parts, I just, just that made it like how, how it is now, like all these different people and all these different styles combined into the one song. just a really cool way to feel connected again like in those days feel connected with the other bands and with the crew and with people who watched it it was really cool to like feel the connection again
In our Belgian studio, we have Paul Shorty Van Kamp from Killer and Mario Grizzly Powells from Ostergaard, two legendary Belgian bands that have been around for 40 years this year. How do you guys look back on 40 years of metal? You were first. Yes, we, uh, I started with Killer in 1980. Killer and Ostrogoth, we were the, the pioneers in Belgian yeah. metal. They still call us the, the big four, like they say, for the big four in America. Yeah. So we have Killer Acid, Crossfire and Ostrogoth. Yeah. So th that's, uh, that's an honor for us. Eh? Still, still yeah. 40 years later. Always Killer, I was checking your um, your Wikipedia page that said Killer and Motorhead were speedy bands long before the existence of Metallica. So in a way, they were the innovators of the 80s. Yeah, that's a great compliment. In the early days, we were very inspired by uh, the upcoming British band Motorhead. And we played fast. We, we had a lot of fast songs. It was new at the time. Uh, yeah. Well, it was great. By the way, did you know that yeah. James Hetfield was a fan of us? Well, I wanted to ask you about that, actually. I saw that uh, James Hetfield was walking around with your t-shirt. It was a t-shirt that he made himself. A lot of people wouldn't believe it. Oh, Photoshop, you know that. But we know how because they went on tour with Raven. With whom? And you also. With whom we played together in Shockwave in Limburg. Remember? Uh, uh. And we gave cassette for Moon's Eyes and there in the dressing room, they Raven put tape on on the tour bus and James Hetfield was listening to Full oh, Moon's Eyes and he still knows it, and that's the reason. So that makes us very proud. Ostrogoth also had a few changes and stuff. Are, we, are you the one that's always pushing it forward and like, come on, let's do this again? That's so true. And it takes a lot of courage some, sometimes. It's a passion who, who drives you. Yeah. And even when you said, should I do that again? But anyway, next day you're there again with the pushing, putting your drums on, uh, putting your guitar in the car and there you go again. I cannot imagine that, that I would be a very passionate uh, Fisherman, for example, or playing <laughs> playing darts. Uh, for me, it's music. So, what do you guys think about the whole uh, COVID situation, the Corona, the whole summer cancelled, your concerts at Alcatraz cancelled? Most important of all is that we stay alive and we stay healthy. But anyhow, it is uh, for us it is terrible. Uh, we we missed a whole lot of concerts. But I'm happy to say most of these concerts are transferred to next year. But the problem is, next year we are one year older. Eh? Oh, no problem. I hope everybody stays safe and sound and that we can celebrate again next year as soon as possible. Great concerts together. Love and peace and metal. <laughs> In 2013, Frankie, you guys lost Phil in the morning that you were going to play, is that right? Yeah, um, that bonded us together with Alcatraz forever, I think. We were actually going to take off to Alcatraz, and then I remember two hours later we were at, at a morgue, and, and you know, the, 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 whole, the whole thing was so surreal, and I remember Marlon coming in my room and he said, you're not going to believe this, Phil, Phil passed away, and I was like, so the, the first moment you're like, you know, whoa, wait, wait, you know, we just had a great time yesterday. He was in perfect shape. I think he was in a better shape, his best shape ever. What happened is blood cluster in his uh, brain, uh, it can happen to anybody of us, actually, now, tomorrow. I mean, uh, at that moment, I was like, fuck, you know, you know, you want to take that moment back, but, you know, it's, it's, it's gone and... And uh, yeah, Phil passed away and that literally decapitated us. So. We can't believe you're not here now. So much pain in this heart of mine. Brother, I want to thank you. And now Yeah!
Hindus. And then they couldn't play, of course. The, the festival went on with everybody in, in mind. Shit. Yep. So it was, it was sad. We, we still miss him a lot. Uh, the funny part is that um, he, for me, is still there all the time. I don't know, he was the engine. He also had a sense of how can, how can we make this better and, and ah, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's like you're on a ship and somebody holds the, the, the wheel. It's also the guy who makes the engine roll, uh, the, the, the one who, who stands up up front to see if you don't hit a fucking iceberg, you know. In a band it's like that. But I remember him as a, oh. <laughs> as a beast. He, he lived like a rock and roll animal, but very metal. Very strong, violent, beast, eh? the beast. He was a monument, still is. <whistles> Big fucking lurch. That, that was the name he got from uh, Billy Milano of MOD. Billy, if you're watching this, you're still there too. Motherfucker. Big Lurch is the, the guy in uh, Adam's, Adam's family. Yeah, yeah. I remember one more thing, believe me or not. Phil was, was also, when we toured with Body Count, it was such an amazing moment. And so one day he comes into the into the, our backstage uh, on the tour with Body Count and he said, Hey man, you know what? I showered with all the guys of Body Count. And you know what Icedy said? Icedy said that, Hey man, you could play in Body Count, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mario Ponsin. Hi, Kai. You guys started Canal Metal. Can you tell people a little bit about what exactly is Canal Metal and what does it do for Alcatraz? We wanted to do more with video. And we do a lot of stuff. We have actors, we have video specialists, uh, VR, virtual reality stuff, 360. It all started because Alcatraz has these, you know, these mascots. The first one is Officer Nice, prison guard of Alcatraz, who was roaming the afterlife uh, looking for escapees. Uh, Frank Lee Morris, who was the second uh, mascot. And as you can see, uh, behind you, the mascot of uh, 2020. This guy. <laughs> yeah, the plague doctor. So we had these these figures and we said like, how are we going to bring them to life? So we uh, asked these actors and they came up with these crazy ideas. <laughs> Diabolik, which is a circus on the festival grounds with, you know, with really crazy acts. Well, that team of creative people going like, okay, what can we do? What can we do? We said, why don't we do a wedding? A metal wedding. The mayor of the town, Kostak, is a metalhead. <laughs> so we approached him and we said, okay, I'll do that. And we had a uh, I can't remember how many, but it was like 30 or 40 couples signing up to get married at Alcatraz. So were you surprised that so many people wanted to get married on the festival? I was surprised that so many people wanted to get married. <laughs> I think it said, you are hereby sentenced to life. And you 
I wanted to do this. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Feel I had no idea. Oh, I, were, <laughs> I saw that um, three couples were going to get married that year at Alcatraz. And I had to like reorganize my thoughts. Okay, wait a minute. I can't marry her. I didn't propose her. I can't propose and then marry her there. That's like too much. So I'm like, I'm going to have to just propose her. Gordon had to play on a Sunday and I was finished working on Saturday evening. And Ira Black, the guitarist, he was on tour with Ian Morbid, was standing a bit further with his girlfriend. Him and I just caught eye and we started talking. He said that he was, you know, a head of production uh, for, you know, filming everything. And I was like, oh my God, this is fate. Like, you're the exact person I needed to meet. And then he started whispering. He said, I want to ask my girlfriend her hand in marriage on stage with corn. And I went like, That'll be a tricky one. <laughs> Core. I have to do this during the headlining time because that's how I feel about her and how special this is. This is like a headliner relationship, you know? So <laughs> he said, no, I'll make sure it happens. So I actually asked the, the drummer of Corn, Ray Luzier, like 15 minutes before they were going on, we were backstage. Uh, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to ask him. But Jessica's sitting there right with me. And I said, hey, hon, can you go around the corner and grab me some water over there? I saw, like, a cleaning table. And she's like, why is he asking me to go get water? I said, like, go, go grab me water real drink quick. water. <laughs> <laughs> and then just before the show starts, I get a text from Ira. We're on. I go, okay, we're on, but when? <laughs> when they're getting ready to go on, all their guests or anyone's backstage is, is highly um locked down uh yeah on lockdown no they're, they're very <laughs> monitored you can't just walk around the stage anywhere it's like hey you stand behind they have a tape line see the tape line you stand over there the stage manager from court took over the stage so i go up to him i say look i got this request from ira black do you know anything about this he said nope don't know anything about this he came up to me said i heard you're trying to do this thing it's not going to happen so it was really stressy. <laughs> so now I'm running around backstage trying to get this going on while we're watching the show. And Jessica's like, I'm trying to remain calm. You know, I just walk over and she's like, everything cool? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah everything's cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's, it's in a flash of a moment. You have to think what you're going to do. So I said, OK, just keep the cameras rolling. for y'all but right now do me a favor i want y'all to have a safe and incredible night the fireworks went off and like cameraman still rolling yes 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 brought me out there I was like what is going on you, you, you know I thought that we were going out there to do like a selfie with the band or something you know like do a selfie with the with the audience are you ready boy I am and I hope she is Jessica Chase will you marry me Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Did you say 
yes? Yes. What did you say? Yes. She said yes. She said yes. Yes. She said yes. 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 Man, I just melted all oh. over the stage. love metal. When you are a metal fan, that's that's something. It's so deep. And I think metalheads are the best people. They have the heart in the right place. When a metal band plays, you know, uh, all the all the fans come in and they look like really mean, you know, and they want to kick ass, whatever. And there's never a problem. I was very lucky because my dad, he took me and a couple of my friends to an Anthrax and Suicidal Tendencies show. And all these like older guys took care of us. They right. went like, hey, there's some kids there. Right. Watch out. Right. And he was so impressed by that, that he pretty much gave me, uh, allowed me to do anything with metal shows after that. And that's one of the cool things I think about rock festivals, whether people come from Kazakhstan or from Spain or from Poland or wherever, everybody is one. It's love. Love and uh, trust and um, a strong, strong bond. It's a very positive message. You are accepted because you like the music. Mm -hmm. So I think metal is probably one of the best things that can happen to your kids. So you took over your father's philosophy a little bit? Probably. Scary, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Congratulations on the album. There's a very true blood uh, energy to it. You hit the nail on the head when you use the word true. That, that's what we were going for. I always thought it would be really great to make an album, but have it sound like um, Le Zeppelin, uh, Zeppelin or Deep Purple or whatever would be 25-year-old guys right now. And I'm aware that they sound like a second-hand car salesman, but I'm just, you know, I'm really passionate about this album and I can't... I can't help it. You know, you named it 2020 and then it turned out to be quite a monster year as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Back to the Future. Let's go to 2021 instead of 2020. But at the same time, I'm a hardcore optimist. And uh, I always believe that something good is going to come out of something bad. The moment that we can go out and we can go play and do our thing like we, we, we used to do, I think it's going to be crazy. I think it's going to be mad. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be such a relief, you know, because... Uh, in my case, I'm dying to go on stage to play again, but at the same time, I'm dying to go out and see concerts and to to experience the vibe again. You know, people are are, are getting tired of watching Netflix. Finally, you know. Ah!
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the ride and that we were able to bring some of the mayhem to your living room. If you already had a combi ticket for 2020, know that it counts for four days instead of three next year as Alcatraz is expanding by one day. Great acts and uh, Belgian stage and so on. If you didn't get your tickets yet, you really need to move your ass now. And I just want to say to all of you, hang in there, stay safe. And next year we meet inside the Alcatraz prison walls for four days of heavy metal madness. I can't wait. See you there. Ozzy Osbourne is, you know, he, he actually bit a bat in 1982. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he actually made COVID. So it's Ozzy, you know, but... And that, and that concludes the commercial part of this show. <laughs> Thank you. Shit happens. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Can I be supposed to say it? Nope. Can I miss Bats? It's Bats.